Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to another great product spotlight video brought to you by Mount Baker Vapor. And today we got something a little different. We've been doing a lot of pod style devices and kits in the past and I'm sure a lot of you are getting used to seeing that and you know, that's, that's kind of the simplest way to go. And you know, to be honest, our goal is to get people off cigarettes, keep people off cigarettes. And I find that those devices are usually the best way to do it. However, there is a subsection out there that we may not have been showing any love. So today we got something special for you. Brand new to Mount Baker Vapor, we've got the Phobia RDA by Vandy Vape. And I've got my matte black Phobia sitting on top of my box mod here. And it's definitely an interesting device. Um, I haven't dripped in a long time and I forgot, you know, how great dripping was. So we're gonna take a close up look at it. I mean, a few things I can tell you about it. It's got this bottom adjustable airflow and the deck design on this is pretty interesting, very easy to use. And uh, my experience has been great. Uh, getting good flavor, getting good vapor. You can hear that airflow really moving around and you can see the vapor production. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little different approach this time. We're gonna get nice, tight, and up close so we can really show you what's going on with this deck. And then I'm even gonna show you how to build on it. So for any of you that are tuning in and it's your first time experiencing an RDA, we're gonna have some very helpful tips on how to put a coil build on there, wick it properly. We're just gonna, in general, see what this bad boy is all about. So let's go ahead and dive down for an up close look at the Vandy Vape Phobia RDA. And here is an up close look at the contents of the package that the Vandy Vape Phobia comes in. And uh, for the purposes of our video today, we won't be doing an actual unboxing, but I will walk you through each um, individual item that comes within the packaging. And right here, we have the uh, RDA itself. We have the top cap and the deck. You can see the rainbow comes with this um, Ultim chuff cap. It also comes with an Ultim drip tip and an additional top cap. Um, with that Ultim drip tip, they're different styles. So like this chuff cap, that's obviously flat, and the one with the um, Ultum drip tip, which is an 810, um, has the uh, appropriate size for the 810 uh, drip tip to fit right there onto your top cap. You can see that we have the iridescent version here, or rainbow, and this nice little etching with this uh, flaming skull for effect. Um, but it's just a really well-crafted uh, atomizer, really well-crafted RDA. You do have that airflow that we were talking about. You have that bottom adjustable airflow. So once you put your top cap on, you're gonna be able to twist it either this way or that way and adjust the airflow appropriately. And one of the things that I really like about this deck is the way the airflow is designed. And it comes pre-installed with a Phillips head screws. So you're gonna have these screws on either side of the deck your juice well right here in the middle, which is really deep. I wanna say that's about five millimeter to seven millimeter deep juice well. And I mean, it, it, look, it looked on the smaller side to me, but it actually holds a lot, a lot of juice. Uh, but the airflow here, the way this deck is designed is you're just gonna drop your coil leads right here and right here, and then screw them down, and then you're gonna wick across into, uh, into your well there and the airflow is bottom and side airflow. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna position your coil as close as you can without touching that. That way you're maximizing uh, the flavor and the vapor production you're gonna get. Your coil is just gonna be sitting right on top of that airflow and hitting it from the side and the bottom via the uh, adjustable bottom airflow. It's just been a really great experience for me and that's something different that I hadn't seen that really caught my attention that I think sets this device apart from others out there. And the coil installation is really easy and we will go over that. Here in a second, I'll show you how to throw a build on it. Let's take a look at the other top cap. Very similar, same etching on there, except for this one has a, an 810 Ultim drip tip on it and it is heavy duty. This is one of them shorty fat 810 
drip tips, also Altum, and yeah, it's just really comfortable. Uh, stays nice and cool when you're vaping as well. It's nice that they include the two top caps there. Um, they really seem to give you a lot with this package. So we also have a package with some spare goodies. We've got our Phillips head screwdriver and our wrench or Allen key, as well as a 510 adapter. So if you want to use a 510 instead of the 810 that's included, you can use any of your 510 drip tips on here. Knife beefy replacement O-rings, replacement screws. So it comes pre-installed with the Phillips head screws and then we have these hex screws as well. So if you prefer to use this little wrench to install your screws, then by all means, it's all preference, whatever you feel is best, but you do have the replacement screws. And we all know how popular squonking is these days, and it does come included with a squonk pin, and that is fairly easy to change out. And I will describe to you uh, how to take care of that as well. So if you'd like to change it from the uh, regular 510 connection here at the bottom, all you need to do is you just remove this screw. And if you just remove the screw and try and insert the squonk pin, you're gonna run into a few problems. So it's not gonna fit. What you need to do is this white rubber gasket that is around that, that also needs to come out in order for the squonk pin to fit in there. So you'll just unscrew this, remove this whole piece. Uh, I believe there's a small ring in there and you're gonna wanna keep a hold of that. And then you just insert your squonk pin. Um, it's probably easiest to do this before you put a build on. Um, yeah, but just unscrew that nice and easy. Very, very easy to do. So now as promised, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a build on this deck and I'm just going to throw this on top of my box mod here. That's the way I prefer to do my build. It's a lot easier than, uh, you know, throwing it on a device to read my coil and this will do the trick. So what we have here is we have some Geek Vape Alien Clapton coils that we sell here at Mount Baker Vapor, and that's what I'm going to be using today. So I did have some smaller coils that I built myself that I put in this device, but I wasn't happy with the way that the airflow was coming through. The device seemed too airy to me and I wasn't getting good flavor. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna put in a larger build and this deck is definitely equipped to handle these large builds. It's pretty much made for it. I mean, if you're not using a large build, then you're not really maximizing the performance of this device. Now let me just say that if you're not familiar with building coils or building RDAs, then please, please, please be safe. I suggest that you do your homework before you even attempt something like this. We don't want people out there being unsafe, you know, or hurting themselves. So make sure you just understand the relation of uh, wattage to ohms and basic uh, ohms law and just be safe in your builds. Uh, the build that I am putting on there and that I have put on my other uh, device, my other Phobia RDA did run at 0.09 ohms. And once you get to, once you get below 0.1, it, I'm sorry, it was 0 0.09, I believe that's what I said. Uh, but once you get below 0.1, you're really starting to put a lot of power and a lot of heat through these coils, so you do want to be careful. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, and I'm just going to unscrew these screws. You're just going to want to back these off. Couple turns. Just like that, don't back them off too far, the screws fall out, but they're not hard to put back in. And you know, I was really surprised with how well these screws hold the leads in. Um, some of the devices I've seen that use these, um, this style of screw, at least where it's coming in from the side, um, I haven't had very good luck with them holding my leads tightly. Sometimes I get uh, bad atomizer, atomizer readings. So yeah, let's just back those off. Now what you're gonna notice in here is if you look carefully, inside where you insert your coil, there is going to be like a white round hole there at the bottom. That's what you wanna insert your leads in to make sure they're making full contact. Don't just, uh, don't just put them in there and then tighten the screw. Um, you might end up shorting it out. Uh, the device isn't gonna work properly. So what you're wanna, gonna do is make sure those leads are inserted all the way in. And it's as simple as just dropping your coils in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
clip our coils and I like to start I like to start slow. I don't want to have to go back and get more coils or rebuild a coil. So just clip it off so that my leads are the same length. Now, if I insert it this way, you can see that that's really not where we want to be. We want to be much, much closer to the airflow than that. And if you try and install it that way, you're going to touch your top cap and it's going to short out. So. I'm going to say about half that length is probably going to be great for what we want. And I've got a few tools here with me today. I've got my wire cutters, and my Phillips head screwdriver, some ceramic tweezers, and some scissors for cutting and installing my cotton. And you know, you can pick up uh, basic kits for rebuilding. We do sell them at Mount Baker Vapor. Geek Vape makes one that's actually really nice. It's a mini tool kit and it's going to come with all this stuff. And the one thing I love about that is that it's affordable and Geek Vape makes really good tools um, for rebuilding. So yeah, check that out. So now that we've got it clipped, looks about the right size. We're just going to want to drop it right in drop our leads in there and you know I could get it a little tighter but I think that's good right there I've got enough room on the bottom and I feel comfortable that the leads are long enough that that's going to give me room to adjust uh, later if I'd like to bring it in a little bit more so we're going to tighten our leads down and you can feel it sit in there so the holes I mentioned earlier that you want to insert the leads into inside of um, the screws here um, you can feel it drop in there and then you just give them a couple turns make sure it's tight but you don't have to over tighten them you don't want to strip your uh, screws even though they did give you some extras and then I'm just gonna go ahead and use a tool to straighten these out a little bit they did give me this little blue screwdriver which is the standard blue screwdriver that comes with pretty much any RDA you're ever going to purchase comes with you know, old blue here. Very familiar to any of you who do build your own, um, do make your own coils and uh, do this sort of thing. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna put the screw in there and I'm just straightening the coil out. A lot of times when you put them in, they're, they're cocked one way or the other and uh, you just wanna make sure it's straight and it looks pretty good right there. And then I kind of pull it in a little bit, but that might have been a mistake. So we just back it up. I don't want it sitting right, right up against this because, you know, if you get metal touching metal, you're going to get a short. But right here is going to be uh, where you're going to take advantage of that bottom and side airflow. Perfect. So let's take our second coil and we're going to clip that one up as well. And like I said, what I do is I take the shortest lead and I cut the longer lead down to the same length. Uh, it makes it much easier, you know, gives you some room for air. So I clip that, clip that lead. There we go. And that puts me at this length. And last time what I did is I cut them almost in half, just a little bit under half. So let's see, right about there is great cut the other lead the same making a mess over here so I've got all my little coil pieces floating around let's clean those up and now this will just drop right in here sometimes getting that lined up is a little tricky there we go so if you're looking real close, you can see they're a little off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this coil down. The important thing when you're building an RDA, especially if you're using um, two coils, is you want the coils to be as similar as possible. If you have one coil that's got longer leads, that's going to affect the way they heat up. Um, I do like the length of this one, though. It is very very close to that but I mean kind of just gonna work that in there and you can see 
if you look real close that it is actually sitting above right above the airflow and to me that's perfect so the original one was a little bit long this is more ideal and since uh, you know we can just trim that up that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna trim that coil up so that it matches the height of the coil that we just installed so let's take that out very easy to do just back the screws off a little bit and then take it slow all we're gonna do is do a little clip and maybe the width of of your cutters there I would say there we go nice and slow nice and easy We can always take more off if we have to, but you know, kind of the same thing as getting hair cut. You can't add it back on, so then we just pop that right in there, and it goes right back in. Let's just screw this down. And then what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that they're seated in the holes correctly. So now that I've got one side down, I just make sure the other side's seated and then screw it in. And just like we did before, now that we've got both coils in, we're gonna adjust them. Whew. Make sure your mod's off. That would have been important. There we go. And I would pull it out slightly, straighten the coil out. We want these to be uniform. About the same distance from the airflow slots there. This is just going to help with the way your coils heat up and the way that the device performs. Yeah, and that looks, uh, that looks pretty good right there. Awesome. All right, now that we got our coils installed, what I do is once I've got my coils installed and I use my device, uh, so I got my Snow Wolf right here. has been my go-to box lately. So when I turn the device on, it's gonna, read, uh, it's gonna read what the coils are. So now that I've got both coils installed, you can see that it's reading at 0 0.08 ohms. Now let's crank it down. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to heat these coils up a little bit and just make sure they're nice and uniform and clean and get them shaped up a little bit better. So I'm going to take that down to about 85 watts there. And then you just pulse. You can see them smoking. And now they're going to start to glow. I might want to crank that up a little bit. We are running kind of low. Let's just crank it up to 90, make sure we get these nice and heated up. You can see how we have hot spots. There's some areas that are glowing brighter than others are. So all I, I do is uh, I'm going to take my uh, tweezers and brush it out a little bit kind of if the coils are right on top of each other with a lot of these larger coils are they're built very tight and they got a lot of surface area here so we're just going to maybe want to create a little space flick off any of these hot spots and what we're trying to do is we want these to glow at the same rate and you can see that they're both heating up nice and red and you can see the way they heat from the inside out and they are doing that at the same rate now and that looks really great that's what you want right there you know and sometimes you might either have to give them a little flick like that like I said that helps even them out or sometimes if they're too far apart maybe give them a little squeeze sometimes that helps too but that looks really good all right, very, very simple to do. Takes a little bit of practice if this is your first time doing it. Uh, everyone uh, who was just here to check out the RDA and has still held on, 
Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching our video. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install some cotton, and for that, we have our cotton bacon. And this is probably my favorite. It's so easy to use. Uh, it has a good taste to it, very clean. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have that real strong cottony taste. And it just seems to last me forever. So you can see it kind of comes in like a little brick with different layers on it. Kind of the way it kind of peels apart it looks like bacon, hence the name cotton bacon. You can also pick this up at uh, Mount Baker Vapor. And I'm just going to tear off a sheet. And we can actually cut that sheet in half. And what we're going to do is we're going to wick this up. All right, you can see that little chunk that we have there. You don't need a whole lot. And then I'm going to split that in half. See all the little fuzzies we got on there. And then all you're going to want to do is just roll this gently on the end to a tip so that you can insert it into your coil. And then we're just going to pass it through. Sometimes that's a little easier said than done. Make sure the coil is cooled down. You don't want to bring your cotton or your fingers. And I'll use my tweezers and just kind of pull it on through. So you do want some tension with your cotton and you can see that, but you don't want to be pulling it through so it's real, real super tight. You want to give it a little room to breathe, but you want there to be tension as you're pulling it through. Too much cotton, you're going to burn it uh, you're not going to wick properly, and you're not going to get the flavor you're looking for. Too little cotton, um, and it's just going to make a mess. You're not going to have anything in there to soak up that juice, so you're not going to get um, a very good vape either. So you want to make sure you got that tension. You can kind of see how it slides back and forth a little bit. Perfect. Now we're going to wick up the other side here. And just roll it nice to a nice fine point. And like I said, sometimes that's easier said than done. I don't really have steady hands. And then I'll, I just like to pull it through with my tweezers. Get that lead through so I can get a grip on it. And then just gently pull it. Sometimes if you need to twist it a little bit, that helps. There you go. Now you can see how the wicks come down the side. Uh, you don't really need that much cotton. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a little trim. And usually what I like to do is I like to measure right about where the uh, O-ring sits here. And you can see the big, the uh, black O-ring right here on the side. So I'm just gonna cut just right below that. There we go. And then the same thing on the other side. And not as much to clip over here, but still a little. Same principle as our coils. I don't want to have to re-wick it, so take a little bit off at a time. But generally, that's going to give you about the right length that you want uh, for your wicking. You can always uh, cut more off. You can't put more on. And then we're just going to kind of want to gently take our tweezers and fluff these up a little bit having uh, having our wicks nice spread out and fluffed up like that is really going to help wick that juice up you know you don't have to do it real hard just very gently see this side here kind of got clumped together because of all the twisting we were doing and then just kind of fluff it out a little bit you can get some of these fuzzies that come off, but that's okay. So now when you're inserting uh, your wicks into the uh, juice well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it from the bottom, push it up and fold it underneath and insert the wick into the well. You're not going to want to just cram it in there. You kind of want to fold it 
gently tuck it up and then insert it into the well. And then this one, put it together a little bit, fold, and then gently tuck. You can see these nice fluffy balls of cotton that we got on either side. Same thing on this side, fold and tuck. Also, if you cram them down in there, it kind of, you know, impedes the wicking process as well. So, nice and gently, fold and tuck. Very easy. All right, so you can see we've got our build on there. Everything looks good. We've got our wicks in there successfully. And if you look in the center there, you can see the spacing between the coils, how perfectly those are spaced. You can see some of the wicking underneath, how it's been folded gently to kind of lay on the bottom of the juice well. And this build will work for you if you're using the squonk pin too um, down at the bottom of the well. There is that little cap over the 510 connection where you will insert the squonk pin. So, I mean, as deep as this juice well is, and depending on how you wick it, yeah, you're going to have to squonk on this thing pretty hard for the juice to overflow into the airflow and come out the sides, uh, which is one of the things I do like about this. If you do get a little leakage in your airflow, it's not just going to come spilling out. Uh, there were RDAs in the past that have had bottom airflow, and it just went down and straight out, so your juice just leaked right out. But this comes, the airflow is right here. For the coils and airflow comes in from the side so if you get a little bit of juice in there it's not just going to pour out all over you so now that we got it all wicked up and we got our coils in place and everything and everything's running good we are going to head and we're going to add some juice we're going to use some bloodbath from the guar line here at mount baker vapor bloodbath is a fruit punch flavor it's got some good citrus and pineapple notes uh, just uh, a really good juice and now people do this a little differently so you can kind of take this and paint your coil in your cotton but what that does is that kind of compromises the integrity of the cotton in my opinion and you end up with this like really soggy wet cotton that's not what we want so I like to do this nice and slow so what I do is I put a few drops on each coil just right directly on the coil and pulse fire. And you can see the vapor coming off. And you just maybe need to hit the button for not even a second. And you can see how the juice is starting to work its way down through the cotton leads there, which is nice. It just gets a, a nice even saturation of the cotton. And you don't get this soggy mess. And in my opinion, that's how you get better life out of your cotton. I really like doing it with this red blood bath because I can see it working. Some of the clear juices that you might use or that I have used, uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. But this, man, you can really see. So we just, you know, add a few drops right on top of the coil. Pulse. A little bit more and I think we're about good now you can see you got a lot of color in there so this red juice is a really good way to see that um, and you can still see how fluffy the cotton is it's still holding together really nice which is what I love about doing it that way and 0 0.09 is what I'm reading at at 90 watts go ahead and fire it up and at 0 0.09 ohms um, we could probably be firing a lot higher than that but you can see you can see the vapor that is being produced by both of those coils you can see them sizzling right there and everything is working just how we want it to so all that's left for us to do is to throw our top cap on and I am going to use the 810 top cap that is my preferred uh, that is definitely my preferred top pop that on there and you'll see the slots here at the bottom 
that line up for the airflow. So there are those holes and then there are the slots on the top cap which allow you to adjust that, which is really cool. I really like that. I don't have to uh, adjust my airflow around the coil position because it's on the side. Um, airflow is always going to be in the same spot. It's right there next to those coils, but I do have control over how much airflow I'm getting, which is fantastic. And that's about all there is to that. So if this was your first build and you have successfully put on your coils and wicked it, I hope you are enjoying your RDA. So what we're going to do now is we are going to head back up vape on it and talk about it a little bit. All right, so we got our finished product here. We've got our Vandy Vape Phobia RDA. We've got those Alien Clapton coils installed. Got it all nice and wicked up and juiced up with our bloodbath flavor from our Guar line here at Mount Baker Vapor. Uh, so we were, we are running at 0 0.09 ohms and I cranked it up. I mean, if I'm running a build that low, I, I gotta have some watts coursing through there. I wanna get that good vapor and flavor. So I cranked it up to 110 and we have got the airflow wide open and we're gonna take a vape on it and see what this thing is all about. Whew. I know you can't tell by my face because it was probably scrunched up, but that was a little intense. Uh, that bloodbath, man, that really came through. I honestly had no idea bloodbath tasted like that. Blood, it got these really good, subtle, fruity notes and just a very rich, sweet pineapple flavor. And it's not overwhelming, but this RDA's flavor, man, is just out of this world. So I'm really digging that. Now the airflow wide open, that is definitely not for me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank it to about halfway. And you could kind of hear it was, did whistle a little bit. I mean, but for the amount of airflow you're getting, it wasn't very turbulent. It was nice and smooth. And um, we do got the airflow hitting from the bottom and from the side. So we really are just saturating that coil and that wick with that air to produce the most dense, flavorful vapor possible. So we're going to have another vape on this at halfway open at 110 watts. Using this uh, A10 drip tip, by the way, that's just uh, my preferred method. That's uh, really a fan of those. And it stays nice and cool. I'm not getting spit back from that. Um, you know, and I'm not getting, uh, I'm not burning my mouth. I'm not getting a lot of heat off that drip tip. And you gotta love that about the Altum. And definitely the way they designed the top cap. I mean, just, uh, you know, Bravo, Vandy Vape did a great job on this. And I believe this was designed with, uh, I know the gentleman's name. I knew his name was Alex, Alex Vapor, so this was a, a collaboration. Um, so let's go ahead and vape on this. You know, it's been a long time since I've used an RDA just because there are so many options out there. You know, there's tanks that have such great coils and they're doing so many cool things with coil designs that this is something that is definitely for the hobbyist. I mean, you really have to love building coils or installing coils and figuring out how to wick it properly. But man, it's, it's great to see a product come along that can bring somebody like myself who's been in this industry for a while and tried a lot of different things right back to it. And that's what this phobia has done. So, don't miss out. What, what I'm saying is go get it. Go buy it. MTBakerVapor.com. Pick up some juice while you're there. I mean, they got tons of great stuff. Uh, you know, and if you got to watch this video a couple times, if you're a first time builder or whatever, then by all means. And there's a lot of great information out there on the web and at Mountain Baker Vapor as well to point you in the right direction to teach you everything you need to know. And above all, please be safe. Also, make sure to comment on our video like and share it also check us out on facebook instagram and twitter and uh you know stay tuned for more great product spotlight videos headed your way thanks for joining us